Well, 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 gather around, folks, because we've got a case that's juicier than a soap opera. Oh, yeah. It's the classic tale of Who's Your Daddy, starring Mr. Horn and Ms. Mannion. Get ready for some DNA drama as they both fight it out. Mr. Horn, you had a wild weekend three decades ago and now find yourself in court to prove that you are not the biological father of Ms. Mannion's 29-year-old son, Andrew. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You will meet him for the very first time in a moment, but say today's DNA test will prove you are not his dad. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Mannion, you admit to this wild weekend of sex, but claim... So, picture this. Baby Daddy had a wild weekend three decades ago. Quite a fun time. Now he's in court trying to prove he's not the dad of 29-year-old Andrew. Well, the fun times resulted in fun consequences. Surely not for these guys. So, Mr. Horn, now you claim you received a shocking phone call five years ago. Tell the court what happened. Um, I was at work. I got a phone call from a family member who never calls me at work. Asked me if I remembered a certain name, which was her name, and I was like, you know how I was back then. I really don't have a clue who you're talking about. So, she mentioned a couple of other names and that kind of rung a bell and told me that she got a phone call. But wait a minute, there's more. Plaintiff admitted to the wild weekend of passion, however, swore up and down that he was. Most surely her baby daddy. It's like a plot twist you didn't see coming. Am I right? So what's it gonna be? He is the father because I was in another relationship and uh, a paternity test did come out that the other the other guy was not the father. And there's only two people that I, I was with during that time. So there were two people you were with and you said you had a DNA test on the other one, and so you feel like it has to be Mr. Horn from this point. Yes. Okay, I want to understand how this all this started. Time for another crazy turn. Mr. Horn claims he received a shocking phone call, and that too five years ago. That's quite some time. Someone dropped a bombshell that he might be Andrew's dad. Certainly not the news he would have loved hearing. Nope. Okay, so no, no. we don't know who like, woke who up. Right. And because that's the evening you say you conceived your son. I only slept with uh, Mr. Horn twice. Okay. One that night and one the next day. And then from there, you basically moved on. You guys did not start a relationship. You didn't and keep in touch. It was none of that. Not even uh, close. Did you ever hear she was pregnant? I found out that she was pregnant. Now, here's where it gets spicy. Baby Daddy threw some shade and implied that Ms. Mannion might have been a bit promiscuous back in the day. Ouch. Not something you want to hear about yourself in front of a bunch of people. I even called her family after this because the said dude that she thought was the father gave me the phone number because I was like, you know, if I got a kid, I want to be part of the kid's life. When I called, the grandmother answered the phone and I said who I was, and the grandmother's like, are you sure that you're the father? So you knew at that point there was a question as to the paternity. Yes, ma'am. I was, I'll admit, I was, uh, I used to drink a lot and used to drug a lot. Next up, the court heard about a birth certificate, another guy, and a mysterious DNA test. Here was the catch, though. No one had seen this supposed test. It's like trying to solve a mystery without any clues. Nada. A kid that probably wasn't even mine anyway, so I just let it go. Okay, so you thought someone else was the father. You had had him take a DNA test, but you never saw the results. Did you ever see Mr. Horn after that, Miss Mannion? No, I had no way to get a hold of him. All I know is my mother told me that he contacted them and even left his name, his phone number for when my child gets older to contact them. But the real kicker was when Andrew, the 29-year-old in question, stepped up. About time, fella. He had been carrying the name Kevin Horn in his mind since he was 12. And now I'm in desperate need of some answers. The very first time. The first time you asked. The mm -hmm. first time I asked. And she had absolutely no doubt in her mind. She had no doubt in her mind. She didn't say it could be somebody else, too. No, she didn't. Just said Kevin Horn. Yep. Mm -hmm. At that point, what did you do with that information? I stored it in memory. You stored it? So I could find a way to find him. Until you could find a way to find him. Time for the birth certificate to have its time of the day. Now this truly was insane, because the poor guy had never seen his birth certificate before, and the fact that another man's name was listed as father, that must have been confusing as heck. So I, wait a minute. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor, my son's last name is my maiden name. Okay, so you gave what? your son your 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 maiden last name. Yes, I did. The name of the father on the birth certificate, is it the same name of the man that had the test previously? Yes, it is. He signed the birth certificate before the test was done. So, Mr. Horn, you don't seem like you believe in this. Being sucked up in this whirlwind of paternity drama, Judge Lake blew up on these people, casually making such choices, and for such a long time. So she ended up taking them along a ride they would never forget. 
First, he thought your father was his father. Then he thought your husband was his father. Uh, uh, then you told him he was his father. Then in court, then you said there's another up. guy. I'm listening to this story. And at 29 years of age, I think we need to take a little bit more seriously the fact that he still really doesn't know who his biological father is. Let's wrap up this paternity saga and pull the curtain on this three-decade-long drama. Mr. A. Andrew wanted answers, and he had waited long enough. All eyes on the envelope. Let's see what was his fate. Mr. Horn, you are his father. We got this son, all right? Yeah. How do you feel? I'm very happy. I'm happy for you. You're a 29-year-old young man. And you know what? I see young men come in this courtroom that have never, ever known their father at all. That's one issue to deal with, and that is difficult. Continuing the courtroom drama extravaganza, we've got Jones versus Joyner, and it was about to get juicier than a binge-worthy TV show. The plaintiff was pointing fingers at her ex-boyfriend, a responsible military veteran, but he wasn't having it. Can you smell the suspense? It's thick in the air. Ms. Jones, you claim the defendant is an ex-boyfriend who got you pregnant and now refuses to do anything for your eight-month-old daughter, Hazel. Yes. You and your mother petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove that he is Hazel's father, so he will find step up. Mr. Joyner, you say you are a responsible U.S. military veteran who would never neglect a call to duty and are 100% certain you are not her child's biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Jones was laying down the accusations one by one. She came prepared. Baby Daddy had been a deadbeat, apparently, and hadn't done a thing for their eight-month-old daughter, Hazel. She was like, show me the money, and the drama escalated. So you, just from the start, didn't believe it? No, Your Honor. Take me back to the nature of this relationship. Were you in committed relationship, dating, what? No, Your Honor. We were dating. <clears throat> we were dating. Your Honor, I would not say we was dating in any kind of serious relationship. Uh, I met her at the, our, our place where we worked at. It was a restaurant. And, I mean, the first night I brought her home, Your Honor, I didn't even know her name. I mean, just to be honest. Now, Mr. Joyner was playing the not my baby card. So we've got a classic he said, she said situation here, people. Baby mommy claimed she cut off all her other romantic ties when things got hot and heavy with the defendant. They even talked about moving in together quite fast. But hold up, folks. Baby daddy had a defense prepared. Once we got serious, I cut all that off. And that was probably like, I give it, take a Three weeks after that, I cut everybody off to be with him. She was serious with him, Your Honor. Very serious. The, I'm I met my grandparents, very serious, all my family, the family my friends. everybody. I had really, I really had respected him. I said, Libby, it sounded like, look like you got a good, a good man this time in your life. And and I was respecting him. I was going over there to his home. The courtroom buzzed with their past relationship status. Were they a couple or was it just a casual fling? Even the judge was like, spill the beans. And so the veteran began spilling the tea. He cited all her alleged trysts and affairs with others, be it office gossip, work place romances, and a baby bombshell. Wowza. So what happened yeah, yeah. when you told him you were pregnant? I called him and I was like, I got something to tell you. I'm at the hospital. He was like, don't tell me you're pregnant. I said, well, I'm pregnant. And like, he just sat on the phone silent. And then he said, I'm gonna call you back. And he never called me back. And I'm just waiting for the phone to ring and no call back from Mr. Joyner. Like you I never th called back? I had to take some time to think about it. Like I said, I was not the only one. I'm not a doctor or anything like that, but I know that, she's, that she was having sex. Enter the supporting cast. Ms. Jones is mother and Mr. Joyner's mommy. Now they had quite a few opinions and they were not holding back. It was a family affair, peeps, filled with all the right ingredients. Thank you, you so much for joining us today. No problem. You know, we're here discussing baby Hazel. Yes, ma'am. Her paternity and Ms. Jones asserts that your son, Mr. Joyner, is her biological father. Do you believe that? I do. You do? I do. Please I tell the court why. Well, they brought her to see me when she was two days old. Olivia, I didn't find out until two weeks before that she was pregnant. When you so your touch son never baby, told you? You know, you just know. So here we are in a courtroom drama where this responsible military veteran was asked to put his money where his mouth was. Seemed he forgot where he stood. He had the means, but not the will to shell out a few bucks for a paternity test. Meanwhile, Ms. Jones, the single mom, just wanted some answers. You wouldn't pay for it. A man would have paid for it. $700. Just say, sorry. No, that's what that's, you're here to I do. I mean, that's what you're here to that's, do. That's the to, facts. I agree. I mean, when you when you say in open court that you are a responsible military veteran, and you said she saw you from a mile away because of the way you live and what you have, and you have a home and you have this. If you say, I'd like to have a paternity test. There was a lot of drama to unpack here, but who has the time? But these guys surely had a lot of time on their hands to make such choices and end up here in paternity court. Let's roll out the concrete facts now. Here we go. Joiner, you are the father. Yes. <laughs> 
I see tears in your eyes. You looking at your baby? What do you feel? Man up to her now. What do you feel? She's beautiful. <laughs> she is. She's a doll baby. <laughs> what do you feel, Mr. Joyner? She's beautiful. I'm sorry for denying her. And I will say this, Mr. Joyner, you've lost some time, and I can see from your reaction. So, we've got Miss Walton and Mr. Cherry, a couple in a nine-year relationship, now facing the ultimate relationship test, a paternity dispute over their one-year-old son, Josiah. She believed Josiah was Mr. Cherry's twin, while Mr. Cherry was convinced she cheated. Uh-oh, rocky times ahead. Miss Walton, you say your nine-year relationship with your high school love is in jeopardy because he denies fathering your one-year-old son, Josiah. Is that is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Cherry, you claim that Ms. Walton cheated constantly with another man, and you are 100% sure that he is the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ah, we've got a classic tale of high school sweethearts turned into a tumultuous relationship. Despite the deep emotions tied to their nine-year journey, it had been plagued by lies and infidelity. Both parties had a history of cheating and tit-for-tat retaliation, leaving their family hanging by a mere thread. You know, so I actually have a lot of love for her. You know, I have deep feelings and emotions for her, you know, so, but throughout the, the whole time of our nine-year relationship, it just been lies. So I'm here today just to let her know that Josiah is not mine through the cheating and the lies. There's a lot to lose, and it's not just about you two. I mean, you have this nine-year relationship, your high school sweethearts. Tell me when it started to go wrong. It started to go wrong around the time that... The tangled web of timelines and affairs? Baby mama and daddy's relationship drama took a new twist when they argued over the conception of their son. Miss Walton's rendezvous with her ex, just a week before getting cozy with Mr. Cherry, created a sticky situation. With birthdays, breakups, and bedroom antics all in the mix. The conception dates were about as clear as mud. The week before Thanksgiving of 2014, which is That's it. basically That's, when that's... I was with him. I didn't get conceived with Josiah until the week of Thanksgiving, which is on Thanksgiving Day, My due to us eating that. and enjoying family, way before you know, that. and we end up having sex. That's when my son was conceived. But when my son was conceived, I had stopped messing with my ex a week before. So ain't no possibility that that is. The plot thickened. Mr. Cherry came armed with evidence straight out of a drama series, messages, late night pickups, and confessions. Oh my, a sordid tale of trust issues and infidelity. The late night escapades and confessions do make it a challenge to determine the true father. And what I found out my evidence. What do you have? Okay. Uh, this exhibit here? Yes, ma'am. Step towards it. This is the first evidence I have right here. Um, This is when I went to my family member's house. This is what she told me. She said that a guy that came over that looked some similar like me but had goals in his mouth. You know, so I asked her. Which is not true, Your Honor, because I, I, my I ex asked don't her. even have goals. I asked her. Oh, the classic, he looks like me argument. Mommy came in swinging, claiming that little Josiah was undoubtedly her son, citing all those precious baby features and moments. Meanwhile, Mr. Cherry was left in a whirlwind of doubt as he saw glimpses of another man as the child grew. All of you, the nose, yeah. the eyes is from me, the, the color is from me, the her is from me. He is his mama's child, okay? He looks like his father well, in I'm, different I, stages I just in different find ways. That. That's all. I just if it wasn't that. his son, why sign the birth certificate? Why I, be there? Why cut his umbilical cord? A, why leave I'm, my son I'm not on trying to that be lies. your son and then So wait, the he cut the umbilical cord? I yes, ma'am. Well, ain't that a kicker? Ms. Walton's ex, the one who started this mess, is now lurking in the background, ready to swoop in when things go south. It's like a never-ending soap opera with these two. Cheating accusations tit for tat, and a sprinkle of he said, she said. Ms. Walton? No, he's out of sight, out of mind, Your Honor. What does that mean? You, when he, he start cheating, I'll probably call him back. I mean, the situation we in now. You all have just taken the leap from tit to tat to vicious cycle. First is this, 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 and then you get so caught up where it's just, you say she did it, he says she did it. We don't know if the egg came before the chicken or the chicken came before the egg. We just know we fried. So much drama and even more toxicity brought to you straight from this couple. The real sufferer in this equation was the baby, so time to bring him into the spotlight and see what the destiny had planned for him. Mr. Cherry, you are the father. <laughs> Feels good to hear that? Yes. I can see the emotion all over your face. It's, it's, it's hard. A year worth of I denial mean, being called. I mean, this H -O -E is hard. Hold on, Ms. Walt. This is... What are you feeling, Mr. Cherry? 
What I'm feeling right now is that we've got a classic episode of He Said, She Said in the courtroom today. Meet Ms. Greenhouse, who summoned Mr. Thompson to the ultimate showdown. She was suing me, Thompson, for a cool $750, claiming it's the down payment she put on a car for him. Say what? And that wasn't all. Ms. Greenhouse, you summoned Mr. Thompson to court for a DNA test for your seven-month-old son, G. Yes, Your Honor. You claim he has neglected his responsibilities as a father since you called off the wedding last month. Yes, Your Honor. Additionally, you are also suing Mr. Thompson for $750, the amount of the down payment you put on a vehicle for him. Yes, Your Honor. It's the classic tale of love gone sour on relationship roller coaster. Baby mama and daddy, after a whopping 11 years of on-again, off-again drama, finally decided to cancel their wedding. Yeah. Why, you ask? Well, the usual suspects, insecurity, disrespect, and accusations of infidelity. Who needs reality TV when you've got this juicy saga? Oh, well, I was gonna marry Greg. Gregory, we were dating for 11 years off and on. I have a four-year-old son by Gregory, and I also have a seven-month-old by Gregory. I called off the wedding because Greg is he's insecure and he's uh, disrespectful, and I don't want to marry someone like that. After 11 years, you just figured that out? No, it's like, <laughs> no. We were together for 11 years off and on, but I had my four-year-old son. Right, uh, I went off to college. Right after I had my four-year-old son, I got pregnant, and we tried to make it work there. Fasten your seatbelts now. It's gonna get real turbulent. Mr. Thompson and Ms. Greenhouse were locked in a heated debate about their past, and the accusations were flying faster than a superhero in a cape. Dear Lord, baby daddy insisted on multiple partners, while mommy, obviously, disputed it. So you're saying when you made G, meaning you are G's father, you believe, or you at the time we at the time we conceived him, or, or suppose we conceived him. She was still having sex with multiple partners. That's a at lie. The time. You asked me who it's did not, I have sex. It was never multiple partners. It's so not don't a ever lie. come at me like that. I, you it, asked me it's who not did I have sex. It's not a lie. What I do? Two weeks what prior, I do? Then we had sex. I My had bad, sex mom. with somebody what else. I, what I do? I went through two your weeks phone. Prior. I went through your two Facebook. Weeks prior. Every it ain't two no two weeks. Well, they kept duking it out over their relationship. Yep, still at it. Thompson claimed that the plaintiff accused him of sticking around only because of their child, SJ. Pretty soon, financial matters were thrown into the mix and it got heated. It's like a soap opera with a dash of family feud. And Judge Lake was in the middle of it all, trying to untangle this messy web of accusations and emotions. We was only together because of SJ? This is what you told me multiple times. I told you, you don't that? really want to be with me, Greg. I told you, you only with me Greg, because of SJ. I told you, you that. And to a major, to a major extent, yes, because of my son, the all-American way, your mom and your original mom and daddy and raising your kids together. If it don't work, it don't work. But I tried my longest and my hardest. Why do you go back to him over and over again? Time for the get to the babies moment. Because of some two-week relationship hiccups and mommy's admission of sleeping with someone else during their break, there were no huge doubts. But hold on, she said he knew about it before they got back together, but the trust ship had sailed. Car payments, whatever they need, whatever I can do to keep them a family together, I will do. I'm, I, I'm not up in all that this. It's all about the kids. It ain't even about all this riffraff. Get to the baby. So this doubt that you have, comes from the two week before incident. You think this two week uh, relationship was something that continued? Around that time, like I said, she was talking to multiple guys. A whiteboard controversy here, folks. Plaintiff claimed that the defendant suggested the name gay on the hospital whiteboard upon birth, and Dada was quick to agree to that and even signed the birth certificate. However, a bombshell dropped then. He wanted a DNA test, but he was lied to by the mommy. Everything is extra with you. It's I not. Didn't do it's not. One of them at the top. Okay, I told you, you didn't do that at the hospital on the whiteboard. The way else at the hospital stuff. with me and you, you didn't do that on the whiteboard. Like I said, on the whiteboard, you, you didn't do when that. When he came out, she know okay. I said something. About him. He, he looked, well, he, he looked, he looked my, doctor my first boy. Okay. Yeah, and, and she know, she know this. This is not the first time and it came up when she contacted, when she contacted Your Honor, you. He this said that my son, my son, is in the hospital. Here comes Shanta, Mr. Greenhouse's sister, all ready to spill the tea. She claimed she overheard a juicy conversation between Kristen and Greg, and that too, right before they signed those crucial hospital papers for little gay. Let's hear what it was. Please stand, ma'am. Hi, my name is Shanta Gunnels. I'm Kristen Greenhouse's youngest sister. I'm only here because I was there during the time that Chrissy and Greg rekindled their relationship. You're saying you were there there and you overheard something as it related to Mr. Thompson not wanting to have a DNA test? Yes, ma'am. What did you hear? When it came up to them going to the hospital to have G, Chrissy was talking to Greg or whatever. She was like, hey. Here's the lowdown. The witness shared a bit about baby daddy's behavior. Apparently, little gay made a comment that got him all riled up. Poor kid basically said, that might be gay's daddy, but you're my daddy. Ouch. Time for Greg to do some explaining. But you got a whole girlfriend, so what but am I doing now? Why do I matter? What you talking about? I said, who are you? 
you're my boyfriend? He said, yeah. What you mean is you felt like he was saying it's G's yeah. daddy, Wherever but it's not my daddy. Figure. It might be G daddy, but you my daddy, is what he telling me. So I call her, I just summed it up. You shut up. Said, Mr. Thompson, let's be respectful to ladies. Man. Not see, that's his problem. Ma'am, He's disrespectful. Ma'am, ma'am. The courtroom is like a pressure cooker ready to blow. Any second now, defendant's bad behavior took center stage, and the ladies were not having it. They were calling him out on his disrespectful attitude, and rightfully so. Even the judge got fed up. But I can't and, uh, ask and, uh, to tell no. my son you you disrespectful. She, you gotta shut up. No. When I call, Mr. when I call, Mr. Thompson, talk to my son, Mr. it's a problem. Thompson, the way you're speaking to women is disturbing. All of it is disturbing. You have a mother, a strong mother. You would never want anyone to tell her to shut she up. Talk to her like that. Well, no. you do. I talk to you. Like you do. That. Yes. All right, paternity folks, let's get to the bottom of this case now, shall we? Because these guys were just talking and rambling on, but we need answers, right? So we gotta have those. Here we go. Mr. Thompson, you are the father. <laughs> I feel more relief. For what? And you knew this had, junk? No, I did. I you knew this from junk? You knew I had died some junk. Y'all can't do this. You all said you've been together for almost 11 years on and off. Pain. Now you've made two children and brought two children into this world? It's like they're in a horror movie. Oh, what a tangled web of young love we have here. Ms. Mitchell claimed her childhood sweetheart, Mr. Robinson, pressured her into losing her virginity and ding, 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 an unexpected pregnancy. And now doubts plagued him left and right. Ms. Mitchell, you are here in the court today because you claim your childhood sweetheart stole your virginity, got you pregnant, and is now denying paternity of your two-month-old daughter, Rylan. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Robinson, in your defense, you claim you doubt paternity because after Ms. Mitchell told you she was pregnant, you found out she was sleeping with four other men. Yes, Your Honor. The drama continues. Mr. Robinson claims he only found out about the possible other men in Ms. Mitchell's life through Facebook. And wait a sec, from her best friend, who was quite eager to spill the beans on her friend. She and didn't even tell me I, she was pregnant, Your Honor. She called. had one of her friends she grew up with inboxed me and her on Facebook and said, I'm not trying to start no drama. Or no drama. I thought I'd let you know that she had sex with four other guys, okay? Let me get this story straight. You start getting messages yes, from the peanut gallery. Yes, Your Honor, from her best friend. Well, here's a twist. Erica, a key player in this drama, apparently went to the hospital and tried to get Ryan involved in the baby's life, but that didn't work. Meanwhile, Diana, Hope's mom, joined the party and adamantly defended her daughter's virtue. She claimed she was raised better than all this drama suggested. So I said, Erica, I said, will you do me a favor? She said, what, bub? I said, will you make sure you go to the hospital for me? She said, yes, I will. And, and she so went. she went. She, yeah, and when she, she went. came up, she said that she tried to get Ryan to come, but Heather wouldn't let him. That's a lie, Your Honor. That's, that's not a lie. lie. That's exactly that's a lie, what she told me. Your Honor, I that's so, fair. so, so hold on. A social media showdown in the courtroom. Ms. Diana claimed that Ryan didn't get to the hospital when Rylan was born, and someone was behind that. However, the real reason was revealed soon enough. Facebook drama was also on the menu, with accusations flying about statuses and immaturity, and there went the judge. Two days after the baby was born. So if he was in jail, really? if he was Drew in jail, how did he get arrested again? With my daughter in the hospital. And yes, his sister was there, and I said, well, where's Ryan? It wasn't the day after, it was the ninth. I'm the one right that there. said, well, I'm glad you're here. Where's Ryan? And she said, well, I'm trying to get a hold of him. And then I said, did you get a hold of him? And she said, no, Heather won't let him come. Man, this was like a soap opera on steroids. Now Diana met Mr. Robinson, the potential baby daddy, and things seemed fine at first, but it all went south pretty soon. Now, Heather was in the mix, and she was here to tell the court that Hope didn't want Ryan to be part of Rylan's life. Lord, when will this drama end? Yeah, she is pregnant. I want to meet this man. I met him. He took me to his mother's house. It was a good time. I mean, it was a nice day. I thought, okay, well, maybe he's he, maybe he's going to be okay. Well, then, evidently, he's back with Heather or whatever, and everything changes. Yes, I have. I've contacted her and asked her and asked about the baby, and I did. So, we've got a baby named Rylan in the mix and her potential daddy, who seriously doubted his paternity. He argued that baby Rylan didn't look like him. So much so, he even presented pictures of his son. But mommy didn't buy that. I now, got evidence. She doesn't even look like me yep. or my Here. son, who is a spitting image. My son, and when I tell you he's a spitting she image of me, just like Hope. My son is a spitting image of me. Like, and when I tell you that... Hold on, what is this evidence you have? Jerome, will you please hand me this evidence? 
evidence. Look at my son and look at her. They look nothing alike. She looks that like That is me. my identical twin. She looks she like That is like my her identical mother twin. She looks nothing So like you me. submitted these photos yes, to the court. Well, these guys sure were ready to hear the results. And I think I say this for everyone. So were we? That was a lot to process. And these guys sure as heck did not make it easier for the court. Let's see what fate the baby was dealt with. Mr. Robinson, you are the father. <laughs> Before I ask Ms. Mitchell if it would be okay if you meet your daughter for the first time, I have to say, concerning the arbitration, where you were asking the court for $337.50, that's what you would be entitled to if it was determined that Mr. Robinson was, in fact, Ryland's biological father. In the paternity court drama, Health Hazard, we got Ms. Renfrow saying Mr. Tuzzi's the dad because their kid has a rare belly problem. Mr. Tuzzi's like, no way, that kid doesn't even look like me. They're slinging words and throwing shade until the judge delivers a jaw-dropping twist. Suddenly, it's all gasps and sass, turning this episode into a mystery ride of who's the daddy, and wait till you see this clip. Kendall was born with a serious medical condition and believe it was genetically passed down by the defendant. And that's why today's paternity results are critical. Is that correct? Yes, that just happened. So Ms. Renfro kicks things off, claiming Mr. Tuzzi is totally the dad of her baby, who's got this rare health thing she thinks is from him. Mr. Tuzzi's like, nope, not me, and braces for a courtroom showdown. It's like the start of a wild ride where they're both digging in their heels for a battle over baby Kendall's daddy drama. Cue the dramatic music and let the paternity puzzle begin. Hang on, it gets wilder. Your Honor, I seen him one time. I went over to her house uh, one time and that was it, and I realized the baby just don't look nowhere near like me. So you admit that you have not stepped up to the plate for the baby because you truly don't believe this child is your child. Yes, Your Honor. Drama heats up, gloves off. Ms. Renfrow throws shade at Mr. Tuzzi for ghosting her and baby Kendall, especially when the little one has to go under the knife. Mr. Tuzzi's defense? That kid looks nothing like me, basically saying his no-show is because he's got major baby daddy doubts. It's like a soap opera where the baby's paternity is the big cliffhanger, and Mr. Tuzzi's playing the not my circus, not my monkey card. Drama's brewing, and it's not just about who forgot to take out the trash. What's next? Even more drama. My son has a issue with his, his stomach. He was born with what you call Hershey. Burner's disease and it's passed through genetics and none of my other kids have it. I had sex with him, I had got pregnant and my son had to have surgery at six days old. He had to have part of his intestine removed. But it can be passed through your mom, your dad, it could be down the, down the road for, from anybody in your Well, what the hell did we just see? So now, Ms. Renfro turns into a biology teacher, explaining that baby Kendall's got Hirschsprung's disease, which is like winning a weird genetic lottery. Nobody wants to win. She's pretty sure the unlucky ticket came from Mr. Tuzzi's side because nobody in her family had to play this game before. This whole science lesson isn't just for fun. It's super important for figuring out how to keep Kendall happy and healthy. It's like they're on a medical mystery tour, with DNA clues pointing to who might hold the map for navigating Kendall's health maze. Renfro, what has it been like for the past six months it, to have to raise this child without the man you say is his biological father and go through all of this medical... Like, I mean, I mean, look, when you're having a medical issue, everybody knows the first thing they ask you is your family history. You're not able to give a lot of the information related to Mr. Tuesday's side if, in fact, he is the child's biological father. Because he ignores me. He... Because he won't cooperate. Ms. Renfro's solo mom saga is like being a superhero with no sidekick, where diaper changes meet medical dramas. She's juggling bills and baby thermometers, all while Mr. Tuzzi plays hide-and-seek with responsibility. Imagine her life as a one-woman circus, trying to keep all the juggling balls in the air. Baby, health, and money. It's less poor me and more pour me another coffee as she tackles each challenge with a mix of grit and mom magic. Mr. Tuzzi are not the father. Yes! Oops. Told you! That is fine. I'm okay with that. Do you know who is. Yes, ma'am. If he wasn't the father, then yes, ma'am, I know. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You asked, I answered. No, 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 hold on. Because you done got on my nerves now. Because you got a smart mouth, but you're not smart enough to know when you're lying. Since all you can do is shrug your shoulders, stay silent. Because you were so dramatic about how Mr. Toozy had never done anything. Oh, and you cried. Hold on. You cried yourself a river in this courtroom, baby. You sat up and wasted everybody no, else's time. No, I didn't time. waste nobody's time. No, no, no. Yes, time. you did. It's like the last episode of a drama-filled TV show where Judge Lake shocks everyone with a huge surprise. But hold on, because we've already seen it all. Money issues, tons of yelling, and a guy who's totally done with being in court. Hey, hey, hey! He's Let me tell good. you something. He's Your son deserves to know who his father is. And he's still and 
And listen, listen. And your son need to have a mother that knows when to shut her mouth and her leg. The case kicks off with Mr. Harvey stepping up to the plate, asking for his money back for baby goodies from Ms. Jet for a kiddo he swears on his vintage comic book collection isn't his. Ms. Jet, not missing a beat, throws a curveball back with a demand for a paternity test, insisting Mr. Harvey is the dad, and it's high time he stepped into those dad shoes. This lays down the gauntlet for their showdown, with paternity and diaper money at the heart of their school. Mr. Harvey's quest to get reimbursed for his baby shopping spree, armed with receipts and a PowerPoint presentation of his purchases versus Ms. Jet's wish list. Despite Mr. Harvey playing Santa, Ms. Jet argues his efforts were more Grinch-like, missing the mark on both timing and completeness. This chapter dives into the nitty-gritty of their financial tiffs and the Herculean task of proving Mr. Harvey's pre-baby spree. See that evidence. She will media circus. It's time to see Mr. Harvey's attempt at playing Santa. The courtroom drama escalates as they dissect Mr. Harvey's post-baby financial aid, including a dramatic unveiling of a $100 money order that Ms. Jet claims wouldn't even cover the baby's gourmet formula. Despite Mr. Harvey's belief that he's been Father Christmas, Ms. Jet argues his financial contributions are more Scrooge than Saint, keeping the cash clash simmering on the stove. Okay, now we're about to jump into a family feud that's messier than a toddler's birthday party. As the saga continues, we're taken deeper into the rabbit hole of their crumbling fairy tale, with Mr. Harvey citing a scene straight out of a bad movie as his cue to ghost. Ms. Jet and her mom dish out their expectations of Mr. Harvey's daddy duties, while his aunt throws shade on the baby's paternity based on a family knows that apparently skipped a generation. This act brings the family into the fray, turning the paternity puzzle into a full-blown family. A big moment comes when the paternity test results come in, like a rapper dropping the mic. Mr. Harvey is the kind of guy who's ready to show off all the crazy secrets he's been hiding. At this point... It's fine, because I was in a relationship before I met him. I was in a relationship. Ms. Jet, you're so diplomatic now. Probably about 30 minutes of you taking this young man through the ringer. <laughs> And opens the case by explaining her relationship with Mr. Kaiser, stating they have a three-year-old son together, and she is seeking to prove Mr. Kaiser is also the father of her six-month-old son, Isaac, who Mr. Kaiser denies. Mr. Kaiser counters by claiming that during a period of separation, Ms. England was involved with another man, and he is confident this man is Isaac's biological father. The stage is set for a conflict centered around paternity and the implications of their past actions on their current relationship. Ms. England, you say that you and Mr. Kaiser have been together for six years years, have a three-year-old son together, but claim he's now denying your six-month-old son Isaac, and you're here to prove that he is the father. Yes, Your Honor. Say Isaac is not yours. You say that during your separation from Ms. England, she slept with another man, and you are 100% sure. Ms. England admits to moving in with another man during their separation, but insists that Isaac was conceived when she and Mr. Kaiser reconciled and were together again. This revelation adds complexity to the paternity dispute, highlighting the tumultuous nature of their relationship and the impact of their separations and reconciliations. The tension escalates as they discuss the emotional and practical challenges of their situation, demonstrating the high stakes of the court's decision. Stay gone for three months with this other man. Did you move in with another man? Yes, Your Honor, I did. So wait, you all in a relationship. I want to get the yes, background. We were in a relationship for four and a half years okay. before we finally split and I went with the other man. And so during that time you what? had one child. During the split, Isaac was conceived. All right, and so basically your relationship is completely on the brink. Like the, the Com stakes are high. If it doesn't get solved today, it's over. A crucial piece of evidence is presented when Ms. Englund details the timeline of her interactions with Mr. Kaiser and the other man, aiming to prove Mr. Kaiser's paternity based on conception dates and sexual activity. This moment is critical as it brings scientific and temporal evidence into the emotional and contentious debate, offering a potential path to resolving the paternity question. However, Mr. Kaiser remains skeptical, questioning the reliability of Ms. Englund's account and the exclusivity of her relationship with him during the conception window. Sure. Great. I have now we're back on track. Ryan, can I see that evidence, please? Yes, ma'am. On the 25th of March, yes. you were intimate the with the other guy. Yes, ma'am. On the 28th, me and Mr. Kaiser, we got back together. I came back to where he was at with our children. Mm -hmm. I had sex with the other man before the conception window. Were you sleeping with this other he man unprotected? She, she, no, ma'am. So on the 5th, take a pregnancy test and yes. it comes back negative. Yes. In your mind, you're saying, well, yeah, if I'm not third, pregnant yo. on the 5th, I slept with this other guy on the 25th. If I'm not pregnant on the 5th, then it... Expert testimony from Dr. McLaurin, a doctor of medical dentistry, is sought to shed light on the genetic traits of tongue tie and being born with teeth, which Ms. England claims indicate Mr. Kaiser's paternity. This introduces a scientific perspective on the likelihood of genetic traits being indicated of paternity, adding depth to the discussion and potentially 
potentially swaying the court's decision. The experts' insights challenge both parties to consider the complexities of genetics and inheritance, further complicating the determination of Isaac's paternity. Another genetic trait is that well, he was he born with, with teeth. teeth. Usually people... Babies don't develop teeth until later on. Yes. He was born. He was born. And that's another medical condition. About the, about the You should do your research. I haven't heard about that being genetic trait. I appreciate the testimony, but I want to learn more about. The wow moment comes when everyone sees Mr. Kaiser is actually a dude who's super into this kid. We're still hanging on whether he's the dad, but wow, that guy's got a heart of gold. It's like, no matter the DNA test results, he's all in on being the world's coolest unofficial uncle. Or is he the real father? Mr. Mr. Kaiser, you are not the father. Are you sure? I'm sorry, Mr. Kaiser. You sure? Are, are you I'm sure? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry, but it is not a mistake. You are not baby Isaac. But he can be father. his father. We've been through hell and back six years. We've been homeless together. We've had to struggle to get where we are now. Oh my, this one is truly like the judge strutting into the courtroom, as if it were the season premiere of Law & Order Family Drama Edition, offering a hearty hello to everyone present while introducing the juicy case of Lang versus Brown. Jerome, the world's most appreciated bailiff, receives a special shout-out, setting the scene for a paternity hullabaloo involving two families who probably wish they were anywhere else. You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Lang versus Brown. Thank you, Jerome. You're Good day, everyone. Mr. Lang, you and your mother. Mr. Lang steps up, wearing his heart on his sleeve, fervently wishing for young Janelle to be his, despite the nagging voice in his head asking, but what if I'm just the cool uncle? This moment is like a soap opera cliffhanger, blending emotional turmoil with a glimmer of hope that maybe, just maybe, daytime TV dramas don't have a monopoly on twisted family plots. Your little daughter, Janelle. Now, although you have serious doubt, Mr. Lang, you want nothing more than for this child to be yours. Yes, Your Honor. All right. In a movie straight out of a telenovela, Ms. Lang throws down the gauntlet, accusing Ms. Brown of a scandalous rendezvous with her son's BFF. This spicy accusation cranks up the drama to 11, while Ms. Brown's Denial adds fuel to the fire, making everyone wish they had popcorn for this unfolding soap opera. Because I found out that Ms. Brown slept with my son's best friend from the sandbox best friend. Uh, I don't think she know whether it's my son's or Mr. Dixon's. Ms. Brown reminisces about Mr. Lang's roller coaster of emotions from baby news excitement to wait, am I the dad? Panic. This segment reveals the messy, heartwarming, and sometimes comedic reality of dealing with unexpected news, complete with Mr. Dixon entering stage left as a surprise, potential dad, thickening the plot, and possibly confusing the family tree. He was happy to have a baby. Yes, he I wasn't sure about keeping a baby. I just started college. He begged me to keep the baby. And so, Mr. Lang, when you found out she was pregnant, you were happy about it. Yes, ma'am. Did you have any doubts at that time? Not at that time, no, I didn't. And what made you start to have doubts? The scene where Miss Lang and Mr. Lang become amateur geneticists, scrutinizing the baby's hairline for clues to paternity, could easily be a sketch on a comedy show. Their earnest detective work in the quest for a family resemblance is both touching and slightly hilarious, as they ponder whether the baby's forehead is the Rosetta Stone to solving this family mystery. It's a baby, woo woo woo, and all that. And then he pulled the hat off. He said, Mama, what's up with this hairline? That is his daddy hairline. Stop playing. Girl, please. That's what I said, too. That's what I said, too. But his daddy is 51 years old. Ms. Brown sheds light on the visitation drama, which feels like a subplot in a sitcom about the world's most awkward family reunions. The tension highlights the real impact of the paternity dispute on everyone involved, with social media playing the role of the nosy neighbor who can't help but stir the pot. You wouldn't let me? Why right. every time I text him and say, come me. get used to her, because when, no, when you come and get her, me. she screams and cries like she don't know you, like she's screaming bloody murder. I text him. I don't text you. Dramatic. Ooh, bloody murder. I have yeah. Facebook messages. I don't. Every time me and him would have an argument about him cheating, his mother would get into it. The DNA test is back, and it's like the big shock in the last episode of a TV show. Mr. Lang won't be hanging around in those nasty places anymore. Think of him having tea with the family? Nope. He's like, no thanks. I'm leaving. But here's the kicker: Is Mr. Lang actually the dad, or is he about to be the ex-uncle of the family? Mr. Lang. You are not oh. the father. Are you serious? I swear that's a lie. The DNA doesn't oh, lie. So God, baby. Oh. Okay, so the no, DNA doesn't no, lie. No. Oh no. <laughs>
Imagine two sisters entangled in a web of paternity drama, and that too for years. Well, that's what Shanice and Kira were stuck with. Moreover, one of them wanted the defendant to be a father, and one did not. All the while, baby daddy had a ton of doubts. Let's get started on this one then. Now, Mr. Harden, you argue that you've been buried in child support payments totaling more than $90,000 for two daughters you don't believe you father. Furthermore, you claim that while involved with their mother, you caught her in several compromising situations with other men. And you believe it's understandable why you've always had doubts. So, Ms. Ganahl, first, just explain to the court. So, Mr. Harden had been dodging child support for two daughters. He's not sure are his, he's got his suspicions, but his daughters called him a big fat liar. Though on the other hand, he goes into quite some detail about their dear mother and her shenanigans. He would always say he was gonna come see us and he never did. He would just always lie and that was it. I, I wanted this man so bad in my life. I played basketball, I ran track, all my friends had both mom and dad there. I had my mom. I wanted him to, I watched through my windows and watched raindrops fall and he wasn't there. He told me he was coming. Well, that would certainly raise all kinds of alarms. Starting with the eldest daughter, the baby daddy drops even more shocking details around the time she was conceived and the time after as well. Mommy had been a naughty girl. Was old before she said that I was the father. Well, look. When you found out she was pregnant, did you think the baby was yours? There was a possibility, Your Honor, but you I... You only felt there was a possibility? Yes, because she had slept with two of my friends prior to that. I found During that out... During the I time found... Shanice was conceived? Shanice had already been born six weeks. So between that time, I waited. You know, I, I didn't want to you know, deal with the situation, so I got away from her. Next up, the woman of the hour stepped up. Yep, the dear old mommy. She had quite a lot of questions and allegations to answer. Man, it's gonna be a long day for her. However, as soon as they start, the two don't seem to be on the same page. So much for being easy. I was dealing with somebody prior to us getting together. And um, like I said, prior to us getting together, he was also in a relationship. And when I first got pregnant, he, he, was, he was excited about it. He also, like I said, had another woman pregnant. She was a a, a, a pregnant a month before me. But more importantly, were you sleeping with anyone else during the time? Let's first deal with Shanice, your oldest child. Were you sleeping with anybody else during that window of consent? It appears the defendant got served and hard. According to the baby mama, he signed the documents willingly. Obviously, Mr. Harden did not agree to that version. Actions speak louder than words. And so his doubts continue to haunt him. Um, I was told from the state of Minnesota that when they approached him in Indiana, that they were going to give him papers to sign or whatever. He said he, he felt he was the father and he didn't need to sign no papers, but he signed some document, but nobody knows where that document is. What? Harden, did you sign any documents? Named daddy by default. Moving on from that miserable note, the baby daddy claimed to have asked for a paternity test on a few occasions. However, the plaintiffs rejected that claim faster than flash. Someone's lying for sure. For a paternity test, I petitioned I the court. I am 25 and 26 years old. You had all this time to do it. You should have did this way back when. There's no doubt you should have did this. I, I did it immediately. Why didn't you come? Why, why are it. you letting us call you dad when you doubted this whole time? No, you don't understand. No, I don't understand. Okay. So explain I'd it. I'd like to I'm understand. trying to explain it right now. Oh, the daughters did not stop there. Nah, uh, they weren't buying a single word coming out of the baby daddy's mouth. Moreover, they suspected him of denying paternity solely because of back pay. And you won't believe the excuse he gave for that one. And the shade is being thrown on top of that. Talk to him. We've talked to him. This is our only, about our only time that he's denied us. This, we're just now here about this we went our whole life he's been calling us our dad he's been saying he loved us he missed us he he wants to see us he's never in our whole life denied us until your now. honor your honor I'm, I'm right over here and I'm right over here I'm right in the middle I don't know I've never actually denied them oh the shade throwing didn't stop there not at all mr. Harden took it up a notch and claimed mama was all happy because of the money she was getting for child support yep guess he didn't like getting his checks garnished I don't believe that um, they are well belief and possibility are two different things I understand. You can believe in a possibility and then you cannot believe in a possibility, right. but it doesn't change the fact that it's a possibility. And you're, you're absolutely right. So, and if, if we come to find out that he is not the father, then I will take that matter into my hand, my own hand. Mm -hmm. Yana, this is why I'm 50-50 because after she was starting seeing those checks, she was 
more than happy. Moving on, the baby daddy shared how tough his life had been with all this, and the eldest daughter didn't like that very much. Nope. Oh, she gave him a piece of her mind. From having similar features to the same sleeping habits, she covered a range of paternity aspects for him. I acknowledge it. Your Honor, this particular situation has not only destroyed my life, it has destroyed our relationship. You're you looking like the good guy right now. If you look at me, David, we look just alike. If you look at my sister, you guys walk just the same. Don't sit there. So there listen. Kind of I listen. said I let, 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 let me. All kind of different traits. That's a I great look point. Like your that, oldest daughter that's that a, you were tested for with. I, that's I'm, a great point that Kira said. If you look at them. Drum roll, please. It was time for the grand reveal. Yep, the results were in, and Lake Lauren was ready to get this whole thing over with. Let's see what cards these guys are dealt with. Mr. Harden, you are her father. I told you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm, 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 like I say, I'm devastated. Now look. You see him looking you, at me you, in my you, eyes. No, no, no listen. This. I will I'm this. watching you. I see tears in your eyes for your children. You're their daddy. Yes, you are. A courtroom showdown of epic proportions is coming straight your way, peeps. We have got a mother, a child, and a denial that's left them homeless. Yep, the cruelty of the baby daddy knew no bounds, it seems. But he claimed to have valid doubts. The stage was set. Let's dive right in. Hey. Ms. Curtis, you say this court date is extremely important to you. You're here to prove to your ex-fiance, Mr. Buckley, that he fathered your 22-month-old son, Xavier, because his denial has left you homeless and in need of help. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Buckley, you say Ms. Curtis is a cheater, and today the test will prove you are not the father. Is that correct? It's a classic tale of love gone sour. Mr. Buckley admitted throwing the mommy out. However, Ms. Curtis seemed to have conveniently left a tiny detail out. And baby daddy wasted no time hopping on the I can't have kids train. And his landlord sent me an eviction notice. I had just had surgery. Is yeah, that true, that, Mr. Buckley? Yes, that is true, Your Honor, but I, I allowed her to live in my apartment at that time. I was being nice to her. She got mad at me because I was with someone else. I didn't want a relationship with her. She told me she was gonna make my life a living hell while living in my apartment, and that's why I called my landlord. I was being nice to Mrs. Curtis. It seemed the defendant had been trying to have a mini him in previous relationships. Sadly, no luck. However, the baby mama appeared to be more lucky than what's believable. Mommy was not happy about that situation. I I was in a relationship before and we tried to conceive a child. We went to a fertility specialist and we were on uh, medicine and kept up with ovulation dates and the whole nine and it didn't happen. As, as soon as we separated, she ended up having two other children. And that's, that happened in not only that relationship, but with the following relationship that I was in. Hard to believe these guys were once an item. With the words, they are now throwing around at each other. No love was lost here. In a nutshell, mommy had issues with the daddy, and daddy had serious issues with the mama. Poor Xavier is stuck in between. It's continued to go along. Um, I continued to get older, and I, I wanted a child. I, I accepted Xavier as my child, even though I don't think I can have kids. You Joy, know. I know when I conceived. I know who I was with when I conceived. I, I know who you were with too, and it wasn't just me. It, so staying at your house and spending Christmas with you? Now what happened on the day of birth? Surely with all these nagging doubts, Mr. Buckley would have had a hard time being in the hospital. Turns out the baby daddy was busy having a heart-heart moment with the baby. I was in labor for 13 and a half hours. Mr. Buckley was with me for the whole 13 and a half hours. I have pictures of him at the hospital. I'd like to see those. I end up having to have an emergency C-section because little Xavier's oxygen level dropped and he was in distress. And they took me in for an emergency C-section and my mom came with me. And when I woke up and they wheeled me by the nursery to see him. In his defense, though he stated he was swayed by his heart, however, his mind did manage to pull him back from that momentary lapse. As his suspicions were real, the defendant brought a witness along with an exhibit to back him up and boy, was that enlightening. Hello, state your name for the court. Anika Bunch. Ms. Bunch, you are Mr. Buckley's... Friend. All right. And what information do you have concerning um, Xavier's paternity? Your Honor, I have a lot of information. I actually brought a sketch with me. I would like to see it. The exhibit here, please step to it. This right here, Your Honor, this is my house, my back door. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for, so eagerly, the results. Someone's pants were surely about to be on fire, as the results would lay down all the truth. Let's see which party comes out clean out of this mess. Mr. Buckley, you are not his father. Hey, baby. I'm very sorry. 
Miss Curtis, I wasn't with anybody else. Obviously, you were with someone else. Jesus, Lord. <laughs> Xavier was born 40 weeks after conception. December 24th to September 24th is 40 weeks. I need you to stop this right now, babe. Baby Zoe's paternity was more tangled than a bowl of spaghetti. Her mama had her love with the defendant on the line, as he was tired of her lying and cheating. Will this paternity puzzle finally be solved? Let's find out. Ms. Polzin, you summoned Mr. Calendar to court in hopes of salvaging what is left of your relationship. You say he denies your daughter Zoe, but today you intend to prove paternity. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Calendar, you say you love Zoe and have created a bond with her, but Ms. Polson has a cheating past, and that is why you are convinced you aren't Zoe's father. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. So how did this love story begin? It appears these guys had a brief relationship and then went separate ways. But lo and behold, these guys rekindle their love again. However, the circumstances weren't too favorable for the baby daddy this time around. Constant turmoil and constant fussing and fighting over it, and I'm just ready for it to be clarified and for it to be done. So how did you meet? We originally met when when we were younger and we had a relationship and we went our separate ways and we both I've gotten long-term relationships and my last long-term relationship um, we were having hard times towards the end of it it was about nine years it appears mommy was playing both sides of the field and that made the baby daddy feel like a dark cloud of uncertainty was following him their living situation was a thorn on his side but what happened after she moved out well that was just the icing on the cake after she had moved into her apartment after getting most of her things out of the residence. A week! But I was only having sexual contact with Mr. Calendar. Uh, we were, me and my ex were living in separate rooms. We had a lot of assets together and we were living in separate rooms. There was a lot of things to work out between that relationship. So she finally gets out from this relationship with the ex and a week later. And this wasn't just it. Miss Polzin and her stupid lies were being exposed all over. After the teddy bear and soup fiasco, baby daddy took a look at mama's phone and a surprise was waiting for him there. So how did you find out about the soup and the teddy bear, Mr. Calendar? Uh, I was going through her phone looking for a number that I dialed from her phone and I'd seen that his number was in there and you know, just out of curiosity, I clicked on it and it said they had had conversations for 30 minutes, another one for an hour, you know, and I asked her about it, what they had been talking about, and she said, oh. Moving on, after being at every appointment, the baby daddy was suddenly not allowed to visit, and the phone call from the ex, well, let's just say, it was the last straw that broke the camel's back. She was born, did you sign her birth certificate? They wouldn't allow me to. Uh, it was like a kick to the chest. And so then your doubts started spinning? Yes. And a week or two after that, she was in contact with her ex, and he made the question, could it be mine? Oh, the ex said, could it be mine? Yes. And now, how did you find this out? Oh, the notorious ex was a bane of baby daddy's existence. Yep, even after going their separate ways, he was still very much present in their lives. So much so as asking the plaintiff for one last hurrah, if you catch my drift. Comment before, as you, as you were getting the last few things out of your house, he had made the comment, you said, that he would ask for one last shebang. Oh, really? Yes, he did. But you declined? No, of course I declined. I had been over that relationship for a very long time, and I had only been sexually active with Mr. Calendar and he knows that. I think if he knew that, he wouldn't be here. Mr. Callender's mother, too, was emotionally invested in this whole situation. In the last desperate attempt, baby mama presented an exhibit listing all the reasons she believed Zoe to be the defendant's daughter. Wasn't too convincing, though. I, I believe that Mr. Callender is the father. <laughs> Him and Zoe both have the same attitude. Um, they are very particular about things, such as the way they like their foods and things like that, and if they don't get their way, they'll throw a fit till they get what they want. And I do not act like that um, at all. Same temperament. Yes. Okay. Yes. No protection. We were, when we were together. The moment of reckoning was here. The DNA results were in and they could change everything. Both sides were anxiously waiting for the revelation. Will the paternity cloud be lifted? We are about to find out. Mr. Calendar, you are the father. <laughs> and I'm so happy I could give you the result all of you so desperately wanted. And now we can figure out where to go from here. I want his name put on the birth certificate. Not just about being on that birth certificate, that is important, 
but it's also about being a wedding on hold because guess what? The girlfriend was a known cheater and had a habit of bouncing between the plaintiff, ex-boyfriends, and co-workers. Wow, the woman had a lot on her plate, including the baby whose paternity was now in question. Mr. Jenkins, you say your girlfriend is a known cheater who has spent the last two years bouncing between you, her ex-boyfriends, and her co-workers and can't be trusted. You say there is no way you are the father of her daughter, Asher, and this paternity doubt has put your wedding on hold. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, our leading lady, Ms. Hensley, admitted to a rocky start, but insisted her child's father was her current beau. Mr. Jenkins! Oh, but he came with receipts of her shenanigans. He wasn't playing around with the allegations. I did leave him when we first got together, and I have thought about leaving him, so that's where he's getting where I've cheated on him. So, Mr. Jenkins, specifically, how have you caught Ms. Hensley cheating? Uh, there arose one time we, when we were first together for four weeks. Um, I, we worked at the same location, and I happened to text her, and she was going to come over and spend the night. Who? The air was thick with betrayal. It appears baby mama had been hopping from the ex to the baby daddy, back to the ex, and then back again to the baby daddy. Hard to follow that, right? Oh, man. The drama with this one. It's true be that we were talking as friends because, I mean... You were speaking like you had never broken up. Well, we What did together. the messages say, Mr. Jenkins? They were speaking about how I miss you and I love you and I wish I could be with you, but I'm busy right now. Wait, and this is when you were engaged or before you were engaged? This is four weeks after we had been together. So you do admit you were still entertaining your ex when you first met Mr. Jenkins. Get ready, people, because the plot was about to thicken, so they got back together again. But did the baby mama stop her flirtatiousness and extracurricular activities? It appears she did not, and the plaintiff had proof of this as well. See, because it's a kind of a reoccurring issue is that whenever she goes to a job, she ends up becoming friends with some cute guy she met there. But she, we were working at a factory at the time. She had a fellow coworker that would always come over and like fake nudge her, joke with her, flirt with her, talk with her. They would sit together on break with me sitting right there next to him. And I never could trust him. Yet one night, I went through and I went through her phone again. Coming up next was a very filled and colored conception calendar. Oh boy, looks like these guys had been busy in the first half of the year. Man, that's a lot of fun times. And even after that, the baby daddy still had doubts. I found out Shania was pregnant and I didn't at first believe it because we had been together around two years at the time and we were having sexual intercourse two to three times a day for the whole two years long. I'm talking like all the way through January, all the way through February, all the way through every single month. You actually submitted a calendar to the court that outlines your sexual relationship. <laughs> this is what you say. Well, well, well. Ms. Hensley wasted no time in labeling the baby. Wait for it. A miracle baby. Yeah, two years of all that activity and no baby. But then out of nowhere, bang, there she was, barefoot and pregnant. Activity around other men. I have a medical condition, so. Uh, it's hard to get pregnant if you don't ovulate or have a period, so. So you're saying because of a medical condition, you do not ovulate regularly, have your period regularly? Yeah, I didn't have a period the whole time we were together. For two years? Yeah, I never had a period, so. Well, you had to have one before. So the doubts were ever present. Trust was gone, so was loyalty down the drain. And still, Mr. Jenkins was present at the birth. And not only that, he signed the birth certificate. Now, what was up with that move, huh? I was very surprised and shocked that she had gotten pregnant, because as I mentioned before, all this time and she never once had gotten pregnant. So all of this made you have significant doubt, Mr. Jenkins? Yes, Your Honor. And that then affected how you felt as a baby? It's all because she broke my trust as soon as we first got together, Your Honor. And so what is your relationship like with Asher? I love her because I was there when she was born and I, I somewhat helped to take care of her. Truth time was here, ladies and gentlemen. Judge Lake was ready to give the final verdict. Time to see whether these guys have a wedding shortly or not. The stakes could not be higher. Mr. Jenkins, you are the father. <laughs> we can all exhale. <laughs> I see that you're happy. Yes, Your Honor. See, that's when I know the paternity doubts eat away at people, relationships, because I could tell you really love Miss Hensley and I could tell you love the baby. 